Hey friends, I want to show you this workflow I use to create a cartoon featuring my kids with a combination of AI and traditional tools. So I started off by going to Adobe Firefly and one of the things many people may not know about Adobe Firefly is that if you go into the image module, you can actually choose third party models now, including OpenAI's image model. Because it supports image input, you can literally just drag in an image and describe how you want it changed. So I just uploaded images of the kids and told it to restyle them in the style of Gravity Falls, which is a cartoon they like. Next, I asked it to create a grid of different mouth shapes for that character so I can use them to create an animated puppet. After downloading the images, I then used the original image it generated and asked it to do the full character's body just so I can use that to animate as well. Next, we're going to use Adobe Character Animator, and this allows you to create puppets that you can use to animate your characters. So they have a bunch of templates you can download. We're just going to download this blank one that they have and use that as our starting point. After you download and unzip it, you can open it up in Character Animator. Here you can see you can just use your webcam and mouse to easily animate a puppet. So if you go into the project panel in the upper left and select the puppet, you can actually right click and choose edit original or reveal in finder to actually open and access the PSD. So if you take a look at this PSD, you'll see the way it's structured is it's really just made up of a bunch of groups and layers named after what they are. And we're just gonna go through and replace each of these layers with our new artwork that we created with AI. For example, if I take the head image and just put it in our face background group and then go back to character animator, you'll see that it automatically updates and now moves that part, that image along with my head. So now what we do is we kind of break all these parts into their own separate layers so they can be animated independently. For example, the eyes and the pupils. Then you go back into character animator and just test them out to make sure it's working the way you want. We go through and repeat this process for the closed eyes so that we can get blinking working and of course double check in Character Animator that it all works. Next we break the eyebrows into their own layers so that we can have some animation there. The nice thing about doing it this way is you'll have a flexible reusable puppet that you can use over and over again. Now that we've got the basics of the head we do the same thing for the body breaking the limbs up into separate parts like the arms so they can move independently. We'll animate these a bit later. The most time consuming part is going to be doing the mouth shapes. And the first thing you want to do is kind of create a clean mouth. So you're going to remove the existing mouth from it just to keep it blank. Just use a lasso, fill it in, kind of clean it up with the patch tool. And then you go and use the grid of mouth shapes that we created. And you want to kind of map these to the sort of example layers they have. So the goal here is to map the mouth shape to like the vowel and shapes your mouth would make when talking. And this is gonna help us actually create a talking character. Then you can go back into character animator and talk and you should see the mouth shapes mapping to what you're saying. Now you can go back and forth and kind of clean it up and make sure you know it looks right, but that's pretty much the process here. Now that we've got the face working how we want, we can rig the rest of the body. So Character Animator has these pin tools where you can actually have fixed elements. So we're just gonna fix the feet here so that the body won't float around in space anymore. So now we're gonna animate the arms. And as I mentioned, we want them on separate layers, but you'll also need to do a little bit of cleanup to make sure that the arm that's behind the body has the rest of it sort of filled in. And I just did this manually, it didn't take too long. So once you have that ready, you can use the bone tool in Character Animator to add the two bones for the arms and then add joints and the fixed points for like the shoulders. And then you can add a draggable handle to the hands. And this will allow you to drag the hands with your mouse inside Character Animator as you're recording. So now that our puppet's all set, we can go into our scene mode and actually record our acting. So we can act out and our puppet will match our behavior for our eyes, our blinking, our mouth. And we can even drag around our arms because we set them up the right way. So this allows you to record it and then export that as a video that you can use in After Effects. 
So now we need a background for our scene. So I just did a Google search for American landmarks. It could really be an image of anything. Save it to your desktop, and then we're gonna hop back over to Firefly. So making sure we're set to GPT image as the model and landscape for aspect ratio. I just choose the image from our desktop as the reference and then type in recreate this in the style of Gravity Falls. From there, you can download that to your desktop or we're gonna actually hit edit and choose generate video. Now you're gonna to wanna to go up to models and choose VO2 as the model. And you'll see it already has our image reference, but we just wanna animate the clouds to make it a nice animated background. So we're gonna say clouds moving in the background and hit generate. Now you can see we have a nice animated background with the clouds moving, even the chair is rocking, which is kinda of cool. So now we can just bring everything into After Effects and composite our background and foreground videos together. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. Are they still here?